let's talk about HubSpot. HubSpot is a no. Tell them the story about HubSpot, actually, Troy. HubSpot. Yeah, yeah this show, baby. Because yeah, you got you got to tell wins and losses. We got this is this is a, well, we had a win. Obviously, this is something that we've covered for the past six months. Um, we talked about it from a software standpoint. We talked about it from a CRM standpoint. Um, and the news last week was that Google was in talks to purchase. No, no, no. Before, oh, before, before that, before HubSpot. Why we came to HubSpot? No. <laughs> what you want to know? The word, the word "we" is subjective. I'm talking about the audience, not you. Okay. Yeah. But we, I got involved in a HubSpot. Oh, you want to talk about that? Yes. yes let's do that. All right. So, th- and this is exactly what I kind of alluded to last time, right? And so, HubSpot was something that we talked about in October of last year. It was trading around maybe four hundred twelve dollars. Yep. Told everybody where to get in at. It averaged, it went on a run. Ran up to probably six hundred. In I think mid February, right around earnings. I think their earnings call was February thirteenth or fourteenth. I said, all right, I'm watching the news. I'm looking at all the price targets getting raised. I see this thing going to at least 750 to 800. And it's crazy because after the earnings report, all the consensus was like, that's where it's headed. I did something that I usually don't do. Oh, God. What happened? I went short term. I worked short term. Only because, and if, if you look at some of the, these smaller cap companies, their, their expiration dates don't go out as far, right? So, like an NVIDIA will go out to January, even June 20, uh, 2026. Um, there might be even December at this point. I got to check. But Smaller companies with smaller caps, they might go out to maybe March or June of 2024, mm-hmm. or at some time, the, the latest will be September 2024. And so the options to go out longer aren't as vast. HubSpot was one of those. I did a short-term play. Uh, what we did at 610? I think it was 610. We watched it fluctuate. And I, when I looked at it, I said, yo, I didn't do my stop loss. And so it went up, it fluctuated. It went up, it went down, the percentage just kept changing, got back to it almost got about even. You gotta tell let me tell this whole story. Go, go quickly. Tell from your perspective. All right. So here's the thing. So we get we get he tells me, like, yo, we HubSpot, this is the plan. I'm yeah. like, all right. So I put money in, I put money into this HubSpot option. Like he says, short term options always get me nervous because there's too much that can happen, right? Yeah, it's a lot yeah. of like, things that's out of your control. Any anything, variables. Anything can happen. So HubSpot, um, they have like crazy earnings they blow out their earnings mm-hmm. and he calls me and he was like yo happy birthday like HubSpot is about to oh, you're gonna be up 100 you're gonna be up 100 percent tomorrow and i said we'll see were you huh you weren't the next day you weren't, <laughs> no, I wasn't. Next day you weren't. so so the next day because i said yo these things i see how these things happen yeah. before they go up and then they so i was up like maybe 15 percent right no, but no, no, no. More than that. More than that. Way more. 20, let's give it 20. No, no, no. I have let's the pictures. I have pictures. I have pictures. Gotcha. Yeah, I have pictures. You and, know, I always take pictures. And then, and Absolutely. Then, and, then, and then this thing just starts to tank. Pull back. Starts, it starts to go down. It starts to go down. But then we're losing time because we only got two weeks, right? So then I'm like, okay. I'm like. No, we got three weeks. I'm like, bro, we got three weeks. Like, yeah, yeah. What, what are we doing? He's like, nah, just be patient. Just be patient. Okay. Two weeks comes. At two weeks, I'm down. I'm down. 20%. Yeah. But I can stomach this. 20%. I'm like, okay, bro, there's two weeks left. Mm-hmm. We're down 20%. Yeah. Not a large sum for the record. Relative. Uh, yeah, but uh, to be up 20, they'll go relative. down to 20. No, no, no. no, 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 no look, now look. Now look. Now look. Now look. I, relative. I'm talking relative. I don't, I don't because I don't know. No, 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 no. No, I'm saying yeah. relative to the average American. The, I'm talking about to us. And, and what, I say, what, what I say about Rick Ross, a bag is a bag. No, no, a bag is a bag. bag. Everywhere count. <laughs> Hit, but Ian, here, here's the caveat: the money that was invested, and I can, and I'm speaking from my side, was money that was already gained from the 400 return from October, right? So it wasn't, it wasn't a net loss for me, right? Like I was like, okay, well, I'll put this amount in because the the run up from October to yeah. February was ridiculous. So go ahead. No, that's the caveat. Sure. Yeah, it, it was a net loss for me though. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, but that was it. If you're gonna say that, talk about your net gains too. No, I'm just. Ian always said, uh, "There's no such thing that, as house money." No, yeah, no I don't believe in house money. 
No, I'm, I'm not. I'm yeah. not saying that. What I'm yeah. saying is that there's a net aggregate, right? So if you look at the games okay. that you no, have, we talk about games a lot, though. I'm just saying that. I'm talking gotta, about your specific games. I talk about games. Okay, but we we gotta just. You know, I want just that paint. part. Yeah, because you can going. learn. You can learn, and, and, yes. and everybody loses every once in a while. Absolutely. Yeah. But you can you can learn in your in your losses. Yeah. So I'm going for it. So we down twenty percent. I'm like, bro. This is a true story. Two weeks left, bro. It's two weeks left. We're down twenty percent. The decay, the time decay is starting to kick in. I feel uncomfortable with the situation. He's like, yo, just wait. I've seen this happen before. Just wait. Plenty of times. Okay. Next week, now we now we one weekend. Then we go down 30%. He's like, well, yo, this is wait. not how it ends, though. This is not how it ends. A few days later, we down 50%. <laughs> but this isn't how it ends. <laughs> Keep going. Well, how does it end? That's how it ends? Well, no, I mean, so, oh. <laughs> so, then, so it goes back up. So I'm down like 35. No, no, it climbed all the way back up to it was like o- it was over 10. Right. No, it was over at that point in time. No, I have the pitch. It climbed back down to 10. percent I'm like, I don't. I'm leaving. I literally have the tag. At what point did you exit? I was down 12. percent Bottom line is this: <laughs> if, one of if you're up 20, percent if it gets down to five, cut the loss. Or, this is what I'm or, saying. Or, or t- take the 20. percent 20 percent has never been a bad day at the office. This is true. Yep. 20% but, has never been a bad day at the office. But this yeah. is why it's important. And this is what you need to learn. And I think I called you in. I might have called you yeah. and said, yo, I forgot to put my stop loss. Yeah, you did. That's, I did call you. This is how I know. I, call, I called you. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. This thing ran up. That's what I would do different. Yeah. Th- that's what I would have done differently. And I usually do because I don't really do short term. But I didn't do the stop loss. But when you're in the option space, that's why I'm like, yo, just be patient because I've seen that happen. The NVIDIA call that I was, I'm up right now, uh, 1,400%. That call was down fifty percent. Yeah, because Nvidia kept falling. It didn't. It was at one seventy four, and it 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 went up to one eighty, but it came back down to one sixty eight. I'm like, I'm not moving, but that was a longer term, right? And yeah. so that same longer term and stronger stop, right? But had I had a stop loss at at twenty percent there, I never see the upside. So you got to calculate these things. That's why I said you you every time you do a position, you got to learn from it. No. Absolutely, yeah, you got to write the lesson down. But even yeah. going back to the the sniper and spotter. The sniper isn't supposed to fire until the spotter says, okay, three yeah. clicks, win good, breathing deep, take your shot. Like, so being in unison and having the rules for all my traders, your rules have to outweigh the emotions every time. Now, Are you going to miss out some, on some trades? Hell yeah. Right. But it's going to save you from not getting, like, I'd rather, if I'm getting, like, shot at in a proverbial battle, I want to get shot at behind a, a tank. But I'm here, not here, gunslinging. Here's the, here, now here's the part, right? After after it expires, I think it was a March 15th call or March, whatever that Friday was, right? Last week, we watched it go up to 670 because of the Google News, right? So that yeah. 610 call well, at a longer expiration is now yeah, a positive call, right? So yeah. it's not, it's, you can't really time it, but this is what I'm talking about just having, being disciplined and being strategic about when you move. Well, that's the, that's the benefit of doing long-term options. Exactly. Because you give yeah. yourself more work you around more wiggle room mm-hmm. you give yourself a, a wider runway right because anything can happen when you start playing in in, in shorter time frames now you're you, even if There's good news, even if good news comes mm-hmm. out it could have got delayed we could have got COVID 3.0 we could have yeah. got you know or it was all the upside could have been priced in and then i've seen already apple, apple a bunch of times so that's what I'm saying. That it could yeah. be it's priced in on that way up. So like like I said, yeah. we talked about in October, it's priced in all the way up. That's one quarter now, second quarter, right? So we could people could have took profit, which I obviously I believe it happened. They, a lot of people took profit, which they should have. I'm one of those people. Now we're starting to see that new cycle. You're starting to see mergers and acquisitions. Now the Google thing is not even a guaranteed thing, right? That's just yeah. a rumor that it could happen. But that rumor alone for them to be associated with that company we'll in this up. space, right? When we're talking about Who's in that space with them? The reason that we were even looking at it, and I say we as an audience because it's something that we spoke about, was because we looked at Salesforce. And we said, all right, well, if that's number one in CRM, who's number two? Who's a company that's... And so I, you start finding these companies. Well, they have their own CRM. That works great. Who's yep. in that competition with CRM? Well, Microsoft is doing great with Microsoft Teams. Yep. Who does Google have in the CRM space? Oh, well... How is Google Meet doing, <laughs> right? Does it have a, an enterprise aspect to it? You can see why mergers and acquisitions with a, a company like HubSpot makes sense for them. And so that alone is like, 
that's exciting for investors. So you see a run up like it went up to, to 670. Do I think it still goes? Yeah. Will we talk about it Thursday? You betcha. <laughs> Apple, I wish y'all would acquire a sudden instead of these dumbass home robots y'all talking about. You gonna copy Tesla? You should have bought Tesla. Man, can we get somebody from press relations or somebody on, on the show? We need to have a conversation. Go find Steve Jobs' rhyme book. <laughs> y'all ran every idea that boy had, y'all ran out of. What are we talking about? This this home robot bullshit? No. Apple, I love y'all. I love you dearly as an investor. Oh my God. <laughs> we do not need a freak off sex robot. We need some better iPhones, yo. Can we interview? I know iOS 18 going to be the greatest upgrade. Come on. Y'all starting to sound like Jim Ross in WWE. Yeah, the, the sales strategy is crazy. Now, so like when the, I think iOS 18 comes out, it won't work on any phone that's lower than 13. So like if you have an 11 or 12, you kind of forced out. Like, out. You, can't, you can't update your iOS system. <laughs> just like, <laughs> man. So, what you so? How do you feel about HubSpot? Are you bullish on it? I'm still bullish on it. I'm still bullish on it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it still it hits its price target uh, for the year. I think it gets there faster if the if what price still, target you have for them for the year, real quick. I had them at seven sixty. By end of oh, okay. Yeah, I see a bunch of analysts have them at eight hundred to eight fifty. I was being conservative at seven sixty. And what do, what about you? They're gonna have a nice little sharp pullback. They they could get to, to 760, but they're gonna have a pullback, especially if we have any of those uh geopolitical events. Um yeah. but if, if Google gets it, this would be a great acquisition. But I definitely do see them pulling back for sure. Great, great company though. Pull back before yeah. they hit that target, though. Yeah, and then it, I mean, outside of the geopolitical things, there's been those rumors of well, we thought we were gonna have six rate reductions throughout the year. Then it became we're going to have three re rate reductions for the year from the Fed. Now this talks that there may not be any rate reductions uh, for the year. So these type of things we got to take into account when we're factoring yeah. some of the prices. Um, because, we, I mean, we spoke about the the importance or the impact that rates have on tech companies. The cost of business, the cost of labor obviously gets reduced when interest rates are lower. So if that happens, great. If it doesn't happen, we'll see. And um, in a black swan, Bank of America sitting on like a $900 million bond loss, unrealized, that no one's talking about. Banks are in shambles, yo. I'm not doom and gloom. I hate when y'all say that. Like five years ago, it was like, man, I wish somebody black would bring us all the investing information. And here we are now. Um, my rant brought to you by 85 South. But I'm like, Bank of America is damn near sitting on a billion dollar unrealized loss. You think they're the only one? The same mistakes keep getting made every damn well pre-recession because they won't announce it. But at some point, the the pen is going to drop, the shoe is going to fall, and then the truth is going to come out. 